Salutations YouTube, Rookie Stacker, back again. It's been almost a week since I last posted. Straighten out the camera here. And um, I haven't made any new silver purchases up to the point where we were last video, where we were completely up to speed. But I didn't want to go a super long time without posting a video because I'm not sure when I'm going to make another silver purchase. Everything out here is sold out. Um, again, I'm here from Oakland, California. Coin shops have no eagles. They have no buffaloes. They have no bullion, period, really. Um, I'm really kind of limited to private sellers or online bullion dealers. And that's tough for me because, um, you know, with the coin shops being either too high in premium or not having what I'm looking for at all, um, it gets kind of discouraging. But... The support that I've gotten here on YouTube from you guys, this stacking community has been overwhelming in such a way where there's no way I can I can just give up. So I'm going to stick with it. Thanks to you guys. Thank you again for all of the support. If you enjoy the videos, consider subscribing. Uh, if you enjoy each video in particular, consider liking it and always please drop a comment. So I wanted to um, do a video, even though I don't have any new purchases. I figured, okay, well, I haven't unwrapped these uh, Roosevelt dimes yet, which I really kind of been wanting to. There's no reason for me to keep them in the uh, wrapper, and I kind of just want to see them. Um, and I figured, okay, well, what can I talk about? Because you guys already know I have these Roosevelt dimes. I figured, why not talk about the modernity of silver? Okay, I'm very new to silver stacking, but in college, um, I studied history um, as actually my minor, which was weird because my major was behavioral psychology, but that's a whole other story. But I was a history minor, and I have weird knowledge of certain histories. Um, and one of them was actually the modernity of silver. Now, modernity, what that word means is just the process of being modern. Um, and that's important because this is not a history of silver video. The story I want to tell is about the modernity of silver. Meaning, when did silver become a world currency? Because as we know, silver has been around since, shoot, I think the first signs of silver in ancient Greece were 3000 BC. Okay, but we want to talk about modernity. So, um, I often refer to silver as the capital, well, I'm sorry, the currency that built capitalism. And that's really important. Okay, because up until the 1500s, the world really didn't have a global currency. What I mean by that is countries had their own currency, but there was nothing that could be traded and accepted across the world. Um, I'm sorry, correction. There was one thing that could be traded and accepted as a currency across the world. And that was gold. The issue with gold was nobody wanted to give it up. They only wanted to stack it the way we want to stack and sit on it. And because of the value, gold was generally owned by rulers and kings. Um, and that's what we see across the world up until about the 1540s. Up until the 1540s, all the goods and purchases made from a trade standpoint, I'm talking about in between countries, was bartered. And that's with goods and supplies and things like that. Um, but in 1544, in Bolivia, at the time, we saw the biggest silver discovery in history, and this was at a place called um, Potosi. 
And in the small town of Potosi, there was a mountain known as Cerro Rico. Now, I'm doing this all off of memory. So if I'm wrong about any of this stuff, please drop a comment. Correct me. Hold me accountable. But what we see in Bolivia is the largest amount of silver discovered at the time. And this completely changed the landscape of the world. I think I'm actually going to gift this 1948 to my, my father. That's the year he was born. This completely changed the landscape of the world. Because at this time, again, like I said, international trade was done with barter, not necessarily with currency. And so finding this much silver in one place offered that fractional security of currency where you don't have to give up gold for something that you really want. And silver was so much more liquid. Uh, and the thing about it is they found so much of it, it didn't bother anybody to kind of give it up. But that's fast forwarding. That's taking it and then fast forwarding a whole long, a, a long time. Let's talk about the discovery and how it, the pathway it took to become that. So obviously at the time um, in Bolivia, Potosi was a very poor place. In fact... The uh, workers that worked Cerro Rico were working for about two cents a day. And for the people mining Cerro Rico, that was still too expensive. And so interestingly enough, the trade routes in Africa, which produced a lot of ivory, the Ivory Coast, uh, later on it would produce gold from Ghana. Uh, and that would become the Gold Coast. But up to that point, ivory was very, very sought after because it was highly tradable. Now, here's the issue. Once silver was discovered, it was really hard for that area of Africa to trade that ivory. And the only other thing that that area of Africa had to offer was servitude, or in the other words, slaves. Now, I know that there's like a lot of stigma about slavery and things like that, but let me make this clear. You know, I'm an African-American from Oakland, California, and I've learned my history. Slaves existed almost everywhere, okay? Because slaves uh, because slavery and indentured servitude was about who had and who didn't have. Okay, so everywhere you go where there's some type of caste system or class system, there were, slaves. there were slaves. But what we saw from Africa in the 1520s were slaves actually finally being traded for goods uh, between continents and countries. African slaves. Now, the, way, the same way I said silver is the currency that built capitalism. Hold on to that point. Because what we start to see from that area of Africa is they start to offer their slaves to make up for the dip they were, they were experiencing with their ivory trade. Because, boom, word of silver gets around. Everybody wants silver. Everybody wants to trade for silver. Ivory is no longer a very uh, sought after trade good so now the people mining Cerro Rico I don't remember their names so I'm not even going to try I'm just kind of giving the general history but trying to give the important details along the way they still wanted to mine Cerro Rico but they didn't want to have to pay so they started purchasing slaves from Africa Okay, and I'm pretty sure the numbers around 30,000 slaves were exchanged between um, the people mining in Cerro Rico or in, in Bolivia and Africa. Um, and the issue was climate. Not long after those slaves came over and mined, the, the work conditions were terrible, as you can imagine. But 
They couldn't handle the changing climate along with the terrible work conditions, and most of them perished. Okay, most of those people who came in worked those mines died. Um, it wasn't the best exchange for the people um, who bought the slave, who purchased the slaves, because what they used to purchase the slaves was silver. Okay, now this was huge, groundbreaking, because now we see kind of the first signs of silver being used not for barter i mean technically yes kind of for barter barter but more so as a currency and that's why i like to consider silver the currency that built capitalism because it wasn't until it came along where people felt where we saw not good specific to certain places but we saw silver constantly exchanging hands for goods in multiple places, not just one or two. Um, and that's important. And along with that, I also say that slavery is the capital that built capitalism. Like silver is the currency that built capitalism. Slavery then became the capital that built capitalism. And that's really important in our history our world history. So it was silver which led to, it was silver that led to our global currency and how capitalism is set up now. We needed a small fractional uh, metal that had value, but obviously people felt good still about using it for goods and services. And so that is a super brief and maybe even slightly inaccurate because, I, like I said, I didn't do any new research. I basically am going off of everything I learned in my integrative studies across cultures class from college, which I am years removed from at this point. But that is my video on the modernity of silver. While we check the dates and we timeline these silver dimes. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to go a long time without posting a video. I hope that this, if nothing else was entertaining, anything I was wrong about, drop something in the comments. Let's have a conversation. Educate me. Um, and if you enjoyed it, leave a comment as well. Let me know you enjoyed it. Shoot, I'll, I'll post another video. I don't know. What do you guys want to know about? Uh, I know a lot of weird, random stories in history. Um, next time, I can do a video about how the potato saved the world. So, uh, yeah, if you want to hear a video about how the potato saved the world, drop a comment below and request it. Uh, we can also talk about how George Washington laundered... Uh, actually, let's not say laundered. Let's also talk about how George Washington swindled america out of hundreds of thousands of dollars that's a po that's a possible video as well let me know right rookie stacker out